BFFs, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Shalita Maxine and you are officially a BFF. So today I am back with another makeup tutorial. This is highly requested, this subtle matte slay and I cannot wait to get into it. So of course this is my beautiful model and we are starting off with cleaning her face with witch hazel and she had a few like loose hairs that were out of her normal brow um, shape. So I just went ahead and cleaned those up with a razor. Now I'm using the Pearl Essence uh, Rose Water Facial Tonic and this is just to hydrate her face. Like I said before, you know, wake it up. You definitely want to prime the primer. I am using the Max Brow Eyebrow Pencil that's releasing in a few weeks. I'm so excited. This is in the shade Onyx. Oh my gosh, y'all. This pencil glides so smoothly. It's so precise. Like, I'm so in love with it. I cannot wait until it releases. And you guys can get your own. I'll be having three different shades. Onyx, Mocha, and Chocolate. So, I'm excited about that. You guys know how I do brows. And I just wanted to showcase how on point this eyebrow pencil is. Wow. Make sure you're following Max Lux Studios for all release dates. Now this is the infamous Max Precision 721 brush and of course my 123 method. And we are using the one on the tail and the two in the beginning of the brow and the three on top of the brow. You guys know how I do. I hope you picked up your Max Precision 721 brush. I may need you to drop some black hearts in the comments if you got your brush. Let me see who really representing. <laughs> I'm not gonna say too much because you guys know the process already. I do the same process with every face. It's just easier for me and it helps my time management for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and pat that concealer in. I want it to be super smooth, super seamless before I start the number two shade. By the way, as usual, all the shades and the products will be in the description box. If I say something, it's just a force of habit. I'm not going to be naming every single shade, but I just wanted to let you guys know that it will be down in the box. So her brows are like naturally wide. I didn't want the brows to be too wide, but I also wanted to maintain her natural shape. So you'll see me going back and forth, just trying to, you know, thin it out just a little bit, but still maintain that thickness. Um, sometimes I like to manipulate the brows, but her hair, like literally her hairs are um, that wide apart. So it, it took me a little bit to, you know, kind of get into the groove of things. But, you know, as taking as you take clients, every client is not going to have the same brow shape or arch or amount of hairs. So you kind of got to, you know, roll with the punches. Of course, picking up my P. Louise eyeshadow base in the shade Zero, the rumor base in the shade Zero, and blending that into her lids, making sure it is nice and smooth. Using the signature Drip Baby, this is my very first eyeshadow palette from Max Lux Studios. I'm so excited because this is like honestly the perfect like bridal palette. It's perfect for fall. It's just everything about these colors. The first shade I'm using is my transition shade. And I'm using the shade WCW for the transition. Of course, all the eyeshadow brushes I'm using today is the M433 brush. Now for the crease color, I'm using the shade Mocha. And I'm packing that right into the crease, right below the transition shade. You want to remember that any time you dip into a new color, you want to use a brand new brush. This is so you can always maintain that gradient effect and avoid three colors looking like one. Picking up that transition shade again, I just wanted to bring that back. We kind of lost it a little bit, so I didn't use any more products. I just used whatever was left on a brush just to bring it back. Now I'm using the shade Velvet, and I am packing that as using that as my base color, packing that right on top of that crease color. And I could have honestly used caramel, um, which is like more of a dark burgundy maybe brownish shade but I was like let's brighten it up a little bit um picked up that m504 brush and a little bit more of that p louise rumor base and I am packing that right in the inner corner and I am making sure I take off as much product as possible 
using the shade nudes I'm actually going to be going back and forth between nudes and pecan um in the beginning I'll be using the shade nudes which is like a very tan um matte shadow pecan is a little bit darker still light but just a maybe a shade darker than that because I didn't want it too bright picked up that base brush again and I just wanted to bring that color right back um, I'm actually going on top of this with the pecan shade that I mentioned before now I'm using a clean regular blending brush and I'm just softening the edges diffusing them so there aren't any harsh lines just to ensure that everything looks as smooth as possible that's the pecan color that I was talking about and I actually like this color a little bit better when it comes to this specific look because the tannish shade is not too bright in being as though we're using a burgundy base, it actually makes that tan shade look like a light pink. It's so pretty. So um, again, using that clean blending brush to go ahead and diffuse those edges. Now I'm using the Sephora High Precision Liner and we are going to do a matte wing liner today. Um, of course, you know I do my wing liner in three steps. One line um, on an angle, the second line at the bottom of the eye going up into that angle. Then I'm gonna color it in and then I'm gonna do my final line from the tear duct until that um, line meets the um, already drawn wing liner. It's very simple. Maybe one day I'll do like a slow motion like wing uh, eyeliner tutorial. Maybe that's what I'll do. So I just wanted to straighten out the bottom of that wing liner. I'm actually going to be showing you guys a quick and easy way to straighten up any wing liner on the bottom if your hands get a little rocky like mine did. Taking that Max Precision 721 brush and some concealer and I'm just going to go right up against that wing liner. This side was a little bit thicker than the other side so I'm like let me try to um, thin out that wing. It was a little bit too long. So yeah I'm just taking that 721 brush and going right up against it and then bringing that concealer sealer down and it's a painless way to go ahead and correct any mistakes with the wing liner that's only if the wing liner is messed up on the bottom using Juvia's um, place as my three using black opal foundation stick as my two and NARS of course as my one I've realized that I like to use two creams and a liquid for my one two three method um it just makes the skin look a little bit more smoother for me um even though it's two different consistencies I like the way they both mash together when I blend them out so yeah maybe you guys um, will like that too if you try it taking my real techniques insta pop face brush and of course you guys know I am buffing that foundation in now her face was um is darker than the rest of her body I didn't want to go too light because it is very hard to darken up light foundation so I tried to go maybe a shade lighter than her face because her face is about two, three shades lighter than the rest of her body. So I went like a shade lighter. Um, so that way I can just even it out with the highlight. Um, a key rule for foundation really when it comes to your clients is if you're unsure about your client's foundation, always go for the darker foundation because it's super easier to lighten a foundation than it is to darken a light foundation. So think about that real quick. Trust me, it makes all the sense in the world. <laughs> Using... um. I used e.l.f. concealers for the under eye, directly the under eye, and then I used um, a mixture of two e.l.f. concealer colors for my transition concealer. You guys know how I do. It's easier for me to blend it out. You don't have to spend too much time trying to blend out that super light concealer into the foundation. This kind of helps it transitions, right? So that's the term that we're going to use for that. This is also a good time to go ahead and clean up anything under the eye as well. Well, under the wing liner is what I meant to say. Um, also, I meant to say her face is like two to three shades darker than the rest of her body, not lighter. Sorry, y'all. Um, and again, this is my technique. You know, I'm not saying to try to do this, you know, on every single client. This is just something that works for me. My clients love it. So if this is something that you could, you know, or even implement just a few of my tips into your makeup routine then be my guest but I'm not saying there's no right or wrong way to put on foundation this is just what works for me I just had to say that because I got not a lot maybe one or two comments you know saying oh that's a lot of makeup or oh you didn't need to do all that or 
what have you but this is how I do it I've been doing makeup for a very long time this process works best for me so I just had to say that um using my real technique setting brush to blend out that under eye highlight as well as a damp beauty blender and you guys if y'all haven't got on elf beauty blenders you are missing out because I will never pay $20 for a beauty blender again in my life like elf beauty blenders are everything for contour, I am using Black Opal Foundation Stick in the shade Black Walnut. And I don't have a lot of it left, so I'm actually taking it out with a brush. Um, and I was like, you know what? I like the way this applies. I have more control over where it goes as opposed to just putting the foundation stick directly on my client's face. Now, I disinfect and sanitize all of my products. Um, if you guys want a video on how I do that, let me know in the comments below as well. But um, I'm like, this is kind of cool. I like this. This is this is kind of cool. So I am, of course, blending it out with my e.l.f. highlighting brush. This is just a tapered, fluffy brush. And this helps my contour um, not only blend out, but actually show up, if that makes sense. Because sometimes, you guys know, we have a tendency of losing that contour right up under that foundation if we blend too hard. So e.l.f. highlighting brushes definitely give me a good balance so, so that I could see that my contour is blended out, but I could still see it. Like, it's still prominent. That's important. Now I'm using the Marc Jacobs Finish Line um, Perfecting Coconut Setting Powder in the shade Invisible or... The color invisible and it's just a translucent powder a cool translucent powder and i've realized that um cool translucent well cool powders period um really work well underneath the eye it really gives your clients or yourself that mattifying under eye which i love because you know when you wear makeup that's the first usually the first thing to crease if if not your laugh lines first is definitely your under eye so any like cool powders definitely work great underneath the eye um i used a uh, makeup revolution terror Terracotta setting powder on top of that and I am now um, setting her contour with Makeup Revolution bronze um, bronzer in the shade deep. Doing some tight lining with none other than in Glide Gel Liner in the number 77. And we did like a fake feline eyeliner, just a fake one. <laughs> um, I'm using the Max Holt Adhesive for her lashes and I'm applying this directly to her lash line. She did have on extensions, um, so I didn't. I made sure not to get it on the extensions. With the Max Hold Adhesive, you definitely wanna do about two coats. Let it dry for at least a minute or two, at least. That's to, you want it to get really tacky so your lashes immediately adhere to it. I'm using my regular BH Cosmetic Blush and now I'm using a blurring tool from Real Techniques to just kind of dust away the excess powder. I want that powder to really absorb absorb in her skin or rather her skin absorb the powder. Um, so I don't want to br brush away too much but on anything excessive I brushed away. Us using the Alethea Lashes from Max Lux Studios. I popped those right on. Those things are secure. Get you some Max Hold Adhesive and some um, Max Lux Lashes please. Do yourself a favor please um now I am connecting her extensions to the falsies so um you know whenever your client has like extensions you want to kind of avoid using like direct mascara on there especially if they're like not mating with the falsies do it with a clean spoolie first and then if your client allows you to use mascara then go ahead and do that which she said she had to get a refill anyway so it was okay for me to use mascara spraying with my morphe setting mist of course and then you know how I do I pack that setting spray in to my client's face and again this is to make sure that my clients gets the longest wear out of their makeup possible So 
So after you apply your client's lipstick, definitely have them like pat their lips up and down. We wanna work smarter, not harder. And them patting their lips like up and down like that takes care of like 85% of the hard work, okay? We don't have to do much, but just fix here and there. But for the most part, it's done. Benito. So I used um, the Makeup Revolution bronzer and I just further um, set her nose contour. Now I'm using the Ardell Precision Mascara. I'm using the bottom one, it's two-sided. One for the top, one for the bottom, but I actually use the bottom for both sides. Being as though I didn't want that much mascara on her, her extensions. Even though she's getting a refill, I still don't want that much mascara on her extension. So I use the smaller wand on the bottom. Using my Morphe setting spray to set for the second time. Y'all know I do a total of three sprays. Um, this is right before um, the highlight. And this is to really make that highlight be as radiant as possible if you spray directly before um, you apply it. Now for highlight, I'm using the Stella or Stella Heaven's Hue Highlighter in the shade Bronze. And I'm using my Real Tech neat setting brush lord to apply that i don't know why i be getting so tongue-tied to apply that directly on the apples of her cheeks and then i'm gonna go ahead and blend it in i don't have any extra product on my brush today we did not use any skin finish surprisingly um i don't know if i forgot or I was, if i was just satisfied with how her skin looks but we didn't use any skin finish today um her eyes are um hooded hooded at the bottom so her liner actually got a little bit faded so i just went back in with that sephora mascara i'm sorry sephora highliner eyeliner oh my gosh to um fix that liner i'm using the max hold um lash glue to go ahead and set her brows and this max hold has so many uses this is definitely one of my favorite uses it keeps those hairs um in place um in uniform i love it and then I spray with my Coupon Daisy Setting Mist and, of course, patting that setting spray in. So, yes, BFS, this is the completed look. I love this look. Be sure to get your signature drip palette tomorrow, period. All right? By the time this video releases, it should be the next day. So, the 28th. Get your palette. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.